But anyway, that's where we're going to start at verse nine. I said I'm going to do a lot of reading, and I'll do I'll do some explaining. And then verse uh, ten, which doeth great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without numbers. Lo, he goeth by me, and I see him not. He passes on also, but I perceive him not. Behold, he taketh away who can hinder him. Who will say unto him, What doest thou? If God will not withdraw his anger, the proud helpers to stoop under him. What Job is doing here is, is he's praising God. He's showing how at all. He, I mean, God is awesome, right? And that's what he's doing. He's just praising God here, how powerful he is in these verses. And now we're going to find that Job, he starts off strong, but we're going to find little by little he, he starts to get a little aggravated. And he's like, and the reason he is, because remember, he thinks this is coming from the Lord. He doesn't know all this attack is coming from the devil. Remember that. So he starts off, you know, praising the Lord and how awesome he is. But as we go on, we're going to see Job kind of drop, starting to get in the flesh, which we can't say nothing about because we get in the flesh ourselves many times. Verse 14. How much less shall I answer him and choose out my words to reason with him? Now Job is saying, who am I? Who am I to question God? Right here he's saying that. But we're going to find later he will be questioning God. In verse 15, whom though I were, were righteous, yet would I not answer, but I would make supplication to my judge. He's saying, even if I were right, I still couldn't quite have wrong. I still couldn't question him. He knows right here. He knows not to question the Lord. And then verse 16, if I had called and he had answered me, yet would I not believe that he had hearkened unto my voice. He's saying, even if he did answer me, my question, I would find it hard to believe that he would even listen to me. Job is saying, I would have, he's finding it hard to believe that, that God would even listen to him. Because Job knows, Job knows he, who he is. He knows he's just a man. He knows he's a sinner. And that's why he's saying this right here. Even if God does listen to me, even if he does hear my voice, I, I find it hard that he would even listen to me. Okay, and that's the way, sometimes that's the way we should feel. Lord, because if, if you know you, if I know me, we're like, I'm not worthy. I am totally not worried, worthy to even talk to the Lord. But praise God, He said we can. And because He said we can, then we can. Verse 17, For He breaketh me with the, with the tempest, and He multiplieth my womb without cease. What He's saying here, he's, He sees that He's going through this, Without a cause. Just like Jesus when he went through suffering and pain. He went through it. Because at the end he knew. It was for us. Job right here is going through it. But he doesn't know. He doesn't know that God is using him. Like I said before. To prove to the devil. That he will not curse God. And to prove to the angels. Remember he's proving this to the angels also. Because the, the devil accused, accused God. In front of the angels. So Job is going to, he's going to prove, God knows that Job at the end will stand. Now in the middle here, he will fall a little bit, but he won't curse God. He's not going to curse God, and he won't turn from God. He's got a lot of complaining to do, we'll, we'll find that out, but he's not going to turn from the Lord. In verse 18, we will not suffer, he will not suffer me to take my breath, but filleth me with bitterness. He's saying he won't even let me take a breath. I'm so much in trouble. I can't even take a breath. You know, I, I, I can't even take, get a break from this. You know, that's what he's saying right here. In verse 19, if I speak of strength, lo, he is strong. And of judgment, who shall set me a time to plea? He's saying, I know he's stronger than me. And if I was to take him to court, who will listen to me? If I take the Lord, God, King of Kings to the court, who's going to listen to me? Who's going to say, oh, and take my side? This is what he's saying here. In verse 20, If I justify myself, my own mouth shall condemn me. If I say I'm perfect, it shall also prove me preserved. He's saying, I'm innocent. That's what he's saying here. Perfect is a word for innocent here. He says, I'm innocent, but the words I say... Like back in verse 18, 
And back in verse 18, he says, He fills me with bitterness. Because of words like that, that's why he says, My mouth will condemn me. It make him sound like, you know, he's not a man of God. And he will show me to be a sinner. By the way, you know, the things he's going to be saying. Some of the things he said already, but the things he's going to be saying also. His mouth is going to get him in trouble. Verse 21, Though I were perfect, yet would I not know my soul. I would despise my life. He's saying, even though I'm innocent, I know down in my heart I'm not worthy of this. This is what he's saying. Though I'm, though I was perfect, even if I was innocent, down in his heart, he's no, he knows he's not worthy of this. I would despise my life. Verse 22. This is one thing, therefore I said it. He destroyed the perfect and the wicked. He's saying the innocent and the wicked. Are the same. They both die physically. They both die physically. <coughs> Verse 23 and 24. If the scourge slay suddenly, he will laugh at the trial of the innocent. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covers the face of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? He's saying God is the only one who can do this. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Who do you give the earth to? At the very beginning. Adam. Was Adam wicked? Didn't start off that way. But the earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. What he's saying right here. Not, Adam was the first to have the earth. As we know. God gave Adam dominion. Over everything. And then Satan came along. And defeated him by making him. By having him sin against God. So now. The earth belongs to who? To Satan. He's the prince and power of the air right now. So the earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. So that's, how, that's how the devil got it. Job starts getting upset with the Lord. And he starts to say things that we know, that he knows aren't true. But from verse 25 on, he, st he starts to get into the flesh, okay? Verse 25. Now my days are swifter than a post. They flee away. They see no good. He speaks like he's never had happiness in his life. He, he forgot what all the Lord gave him already. He done forgot the Lord gave him wealth, gave him a big family. The Lord was blessing this man. But now, he's like, he's talking like he's never had anything. Verse 26. They are passed away as the swift ships, as the eagles that hasten to the prey. He's saying, my life just comes and then it's gone that quick. It's come and it's gone. Verse 27, if I say I will forget my complaint, I will leave off my heaviness, meaning his sadness, and comfort myself. He's going to make himself cheerful. Verse 28, I'm afraid of all my sorrows, meaning pain. I know that thou will not hold me innocent, <clears throat> that the Lord will still find him guilty. Now, this is what Job is saying, that the Lord is still going to find him guilty. And verse 29, if I be wicked... Meaning guilty of, of whatever it is he's done. Like I said, he thinks he's done something. Why then labor I in vain? So if I've done something, then, and I don't even know what it is. He said, why am I laboring in vain? Why am I even trying to be a man of God, to be a Christian? This is what he's saying. Now Job, like I said, from here on, he's going to be getting pretty much in the flesh. Verse 30, 31. If I wash myself with snow water, and make my hands never so clean, yet shall thou plunge me in the ditch, and my own clothes shall abhor, uh, abhor me. He's saying, if I were to clean myself very clean, snow with snow, you would still make me dirty. That's why we need we need to watch. Like, it, is the Lord doing this to Job? No. no. So we need we we've got to remember Job in our life. Because things aren't going with you, good with you. I mean, what do we do automatically? I mean, almost, almost everybody, almost. Things start going bad, and who do you blame? You blame the Lord. I don't know why God let this happen, or I don't know why God did that. Everybody blames the Lord, doesn't? And this is what Job is starting to do. We need to learn from this. Verse thirty-two. For he is not a man as I am, that I should answer him. And we should come together in judgment. He's saying, I can't fight you because you're not a man like me. This is what he's saying. I can't fight you 
If you were a man like me, then I can, you know, head to head, person to person. But he said, I can't fight you because you're not a man like I am. 33. Neither is there any day's man betwixt us that might lay his hand upon us both. And Job is saying, if there had only been a mediator between us and God, someone who could bring us together. Now Job, Job's going to be, like I said, Job's going to be saying things he knows better. We're going to find a lot. He knows better than a lot of things. A lot of statements he makes, he knows better than that. And I'll, I'll show you through the scripture, he does know better. But, you know, when we get in the flesh, we start saying things we really don't mean, but we're so aggravated, you know, troubled, we start to say things. So let us learn from Job. Hey, he's complaining to the Lord, and the Lord hadn't even done it. The Lord didn't do this. Verse 34, Let him take his rod away from me, and let not his fear terrify me. This mediator could stop God from beating me and quit his terror on me. If I had a mediator, he could have God stop, you know, giving me all this trouble. Do we have a mediator? We have a mediator, right? Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We do have a mediator. I mean, no Job right here is like, I don't have anyone to talk to, to the Lord for me. But Job knew better than that. Verse 35. Then would I speak and not fear him, but it, it is not so with me. He's saying if he had this, he could speak with him without fear. But he can't. He, he still fears God, okay? And that's why he's saying if there was only someone who could go between us. I can't talk to him because he's God and I'm just a man. So he still fears him. So he can't talk to God. That's what he's saying right here. Like I said, Job knows better than this. He just starting to get in the flesh. And he just doesn't know yet. He just doesn't know yet. Now, chapter 10, I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible. Because uh, King James, I love it. But I'm just going to read these verses. In verse 1, he says, I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. Now, that, that, that's what the King James says. It says it different in the Living Bible. But I wanted to say, uh, give you verse 1 out of the Living Bible, uh, King James. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. And he does, believe me, he will. He's going to speak through the bitterness of his soul. So Job continues to blame the Lord for all his mis- misery. Okay, I'm going to start with chapter 1. I mean, verse 1. I am disgusted with my life. Let me complain freely. My bitter soul must complain. I will say to God, don't simply condemn me. Tell me the charges you are bringing against me. What do you gain by oppressing me? Why do you reject me? The work of your own hands while smiling on the schemes of the wicked. Are your eyes like those of human? Do you see things only as people see them? Is your lifetime only as long as ours? Is your life so short that you must quickly probe for my guilt and search for my sin? Although you know I'm not guilty, no one can rescue me from your hands. You formed me with your hands and you made me. Yet now you completely destroy me. As Job, uh, now when this is, he's going to complain from the bitterness of his soul. Is he doing that? This is... Yeah. This is some heavy stuff he's, he's, he's saying to the Lord. All right? Verse 9. Remember that you made me from dust. Will you turn me back to dust so soon? You guided my conceptions and formed me in the womb. You clothed me with skin and flesh. You knit me. You knit my bones and tendons together. You gave me life and showed me your unfailing love. My life was was preserved by your care. Yet your real motive, your true intent, was to watch me, and if I sin, you would not forgive my guilt. If I am guilty, too bad for me. And if and even if I am innocent, I can't hold my head high because I, because I am filled with shame and misery. And if I hold my head high, you hunt me like a lion. And display your awesome power against me. Again and again, you witness against me. You pour out your growing anger on me and bring fresh armies against me. Why? 
Then, did you deliver me from my mother's womb? Why didn't you let me die at birth? It would be as though I had never existed, going directly from the womb to the grave. I have only a few days left, so leave me alone that I may have a moment of comfort before I leave, never to return. For the land of the darkness is utter gloom. It is a land of dark as midnight and a land of gloom and confusion, where even the light is dark as midnight. Job started off great, right? But you get now, we got to look at Job. The Lord hasn't spoke to him. In verse 21 and 22, Job believes because of the way, he, the way he's thinking that the Lord has been treating him, he's going to hell when he dies. Now Job knows better than that. I'm going to show you later on, he does know better than that. But right here in verse 21 and 22, he, he's saying he's going to hell. Job is very confused. He's still, you know, how can I put this? When we don't know, when we don't know why something's going on, I mean, that would, that's, it's hard. It's like, I mean, there's times when I, I need the Lord to speak to me. And I'm like, just show me, Lord, show me. And, and like, it's like I'm blind or I can't hear. It's like I don't hear nothing. I don't see nothing. But when it comes right down to it, sometimes he waits to the last second. And then he shows me or he speaks to me. But until he does, it's like, okay, Lord, I, you know, I need to know something. But the Lord knows when to answer us. Believe me, He knows when to answer us. But He said that uh, a land of gloom and confusion. Where did the confusion come from? Job say he's confused. First Corinthians, chapter fourteen, verse thirty-three. You should have that on your paper. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. So with Job saying that, right there, that should have told him this can't be from the Lord. My Lord is not the author of confusion. The devil is. Now we're going to go on to chapter 11. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I could spend... Uh, I can spend an hour just on chapter 10. But it's pretty much saying the same thing over and over, okay? So chapter 11. Now this is... Now in chapter 11, he done had, he's done had two of his friends come to him. And they said exactly the same thing to him. Now his third friend comes to speak to him. And he says the same thing Eliphaz said... His first friend, and he's saying he's going to say the same thing Bildad said, his second friend. So I'm, again, I'm going to read these verses out of the Living Bible, chapter 11. Then, so far, I believe that's how you pronounce it, replied to Job, Shouldn't someone answer this torment of words? Is a person proved innocent just by a lot of talking? Now, this is, he's talking to Job here. Should I remain silent while you babble on? When you mock God, shouldn't someone make you ashamed? You claim my beliefs are pure, and I'm clean in the sight of God. If only God would speak, if only He would tell you what He thinks, if only He would tell you the secrets of wisdom, for true wisdom is not a simple matter. Listen, God is doubtless punishing you, Punishing you for less than you deserve. Now this is this is his friend, yeah. and Job just lost everything. He lost all his children, ten children, and this friend is telling him, "You deserve worse than this." Yeah. Verse seven. Can you solve the mysteries of God? Can you discover <clears throat> everything about the Almighty? Such knowledge is higher than the heavens, and who are you? It is deeper than the underworld. What do you know? It is broader than the earth and wider than the sea. If God comes and puts a person in prison or calls the court to order, who can stop him? For he knows those who are false, and he takes note of all their sins. And an empty, an empty-headed person won't become wise any more than a wild donkey can bear a human child. If only you would prepare your heart and lift up your hands to Him in prayer. Get rid of your sins and leave all iniquity behind you. Then your face will brighten with innocence. You will be strong and free from of fear. You will forget your misery. It will be like a water flowing away. Your life will be brighter than the noonday. Even darkness will be as bright as morning. 
Having hope will give you courage. You will be protected and will rest in safety. You will lie down unafraid and many will look to you for help. But the wicked will be blinded. They will have no escape. Their only hope is death. Now, like I said before, a lot of a, a lot of thing, a lot of these statements that his lost friends make, you know, they are true. Just like uh, these, the, the last few I just read, that's true. But they're lost. Yes. And what I want to point out, there's religious leaders out there, religious leaders, who can sound very true. Like they're giving you the Word of God. And part of it probably does come from the Word of God. But that's, that's not their point. Their point here is they're pointing the finger at Job saying, You, 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 you. You need to do this. And like I said, they're, all, they're doing, all they're doing is downing him. They haven't given him no love. They haven't given him no compassion. No sympathy. After what he's lost. Instead, oh, well, you should have, you know... You got preachers like that. They wear their nice robes or caps, or they got their nice shiny suits, shiny suits. And like they're up here on top, and you're right here, and they look down. But that's what his friends are doing, and we still have that today. Listen to me. We still have it today. We got preachers out there just like that, just like these guys. They sound religious. They say good things that sound, well, that's, you know, that's Christian. <coughs> but the main point that they're pointing out is not from the Lord. They use a lot of the Lord's lines, but they only use them. Uh, let, me, uh, let me just say this. The Mormons, they carry the King James Bible. But they just carry it for looks. Anything they tell you, anything they tell you, they go to the Book of Mormons. They will never go to the King James and show you stuff. They just carry it for looks. And this is what these religious, these religious leaders do. They carry the Word of God just to sound good. But their motives are totally different from what God intends. And this is what's happening here with his three friends. This is exactly what they're doing to Job. Now Job replies to his friend in chapter 12. And I'm going to read those out. Then Job spoke again. You people really know... Er you people really know everything, don't you? And when you die, wisdom will die with you. Now Job, <laughs> he's, uh, he's going to be saying some good things here, okay? He's, he's got some boldness of the Lord here, all right? We need, we need men like this who will stand up and say, Hey, uh-uh, that's not from God what you're saying. That's not from the Lord. But people are afraid to attack men with authority, like if it's pastor so-and-so or priest so-and-so or if they got initials behind their name, just right away people think, well, they're in authority because look who they, look at their name. And we don't attack them. We don't tell them they're wrong. Because, I mean, how can they? Look, this is doctor so-and-so or pastor so-and-so. You got to let these titles get behind you. Yeah. Those titles mean absolutely nothing. Alright? Jesus had a title. It was carpenter. He was a carpenter. You think people would listen to a carpenter today if he wasn't licensed to be a Baptist? You got to be a license to preach to be a Pentecostal. You have to have a license to preach. Catholics and so on and so on. That's not what the Lord taught in the Bible. The Lord taught me in the Bible by His words, because I had a pastor who wanted me to become a preacher, and he wanted to send me to Bible college. I said, well, let me pray about it. And the Lord spoke to me, and I listened to the Lord. Even though this was a pastor, head of the church, my pastor, I prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said, Jesse, you're doing exactly what I want you to do. You're going to church, you're studying your Bible, and I've given you a Bible teacher. That's your college. You're going to grow by that. So I told the pastor that, of course, he couldn't understand. My wisdom does not come from colleges. My wisdom does not come from man teaching me. My wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because I pray. I pray. Lord, don't let me say anything that's not of you. You got men who don't fear that. You got men, they don't fear 
God. Because they take the scriptures out of, out of context and they know they are. But they have no fear of the Lord. Me, I fear God too much to take his words to make it fit what I want you to believe. You understand what I'm saying? And that's why in this Bible study, we go verse by verse by verse. So y'all can see I'm not taking it out of context. So Job tells them, you people really don't, you, you people really know everything, don't you? And when you die, wisdom will die with you. Well, I know a few things myself, and you're no better than I am. Amen? Amen. Is that pastor that preach, that's preaching up there, is he, any, is he better than you? No, he's just a sinner. He's a sinner just like us. And this is what Job is saying right here. You're no better than I am. Who doesn't know these things you've been saying? Yet my friends laugh at me. For I call on God and expect an answer. I'm just, I'm just and blameless man. Yet they laugh at me. People who are at ease mock those in trouble. They give a push to people who are stumbling. That's, that's definitely right, what's happening here, right? He's stumbling and they're pushing him down. Verse 6, But robbers are left in peace, and those who provoke God live in safety, though God keeps them in His power. Job is pointing out right here that the wicked are not punished right away. And they're not. But we know that the day will come when they will have to pay. And I, and I myself have done it myself. Lord, won't you do something to him or, or whatever? Because <laughs> I see they're getting away with something. I'm like, won't you do something? But you know what? He is. Yeah. Now, now might not be now, it might be later. Now, I do pray that they'll find the Lord and repent of whatever it is and get saved and go to heaven. Because like I said, I know hell is for real. And I wish hell on nobody. My worst enemy, I wouldn't wish hell on him. Verse 7. Just as... Just ask the animals, and they will teach you. Ask the birds of the sky, and they will tell you. Speak to the earth, and it will instruct you. Let the fish in the sea speak to you. For they all know that my disaster has come from the hand of the Lord. For the life of every living thing that is in his hand, and the breath of every human being. The ears test the words its hears just as the mouth distinguishes between foods. Wisdom belongs to the aged and understanding to the old. But true wisdom and power are found in God. Counsel and understanding are His. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 19-21 through 21. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolishness with the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Now, I don't know if you, let me explain that. It says right here, by the world's wisdom, by the world's wisdom, they didn't know God. They were so wise, they were so intelligent, that they didn't know God. They couldn't see God. That's what it's saying right there. It pleased God by the foolishness of, of preaching to save them that believe. And then in 1 Corinthians 3.19 also, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Like I said, you take a man out there who seems to be very intelligent, and, and, and he probably is. But if he doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ... He's a foolish man. He has no wisdom. You understand what I'm saying? That's what God says. God said it right here. They're foolish. You, you know, he might seem very wise. And like I said, and I always use him since he's a popular person. That's why I use him. Dr. Phil, many love him because they think he's, he knows everything about marriage. This is not a man of God. His counsel is foolish. And if I could, if the Lord would allow me, to pull him out of that TV, I would tell him to his face, you have no wisdom. Because all your counsel, all of your counsel, none of it points to Jesus. None of it points to the Word of God. And when you counsel someone and it doesn't point to Jesus or to the Word of God, 
It's in vain. It's men's wisdom. And this is what this is what this verse means right here. I'm gonna keep reading verse 14. <coughs> what he de- what he destroys cannot be rebuilt. When he puts someone in prison, there is no escape. If he holds back the rain, the earth becomes a desert. If he releases the waters, they flood the earth. Yes, strength and wisdom are his. Deceivers and deceived are both in his power. He leads counselors away, strips of good judgment. Wise judges become fools. He removes the royal robe of kings. They are led away with ropes around their waist. He leads priests away, stripped of status. Do do y'all hear what they're saying here? He overthrows those with long years and power. He silences the trusted advisor. He removes the insight of the elders. He pours disgrace upon prince and disarms the strong. He uncovers mysteries hidden in the darkness. He brings light to the deepest gloom. He builds up nations and he destroys them. He expands nations and he abandons them. He strips kings of understanding and leaves them wandering in a pathless wasteland. Kind of sounds like a Pharaoh, right? They grope in the darkness without a light. He makes them stagger like drunkards. So all this is saying right here, God has power over anything that has a any kind of authority here on this earth. Any person, whether it be king, president, preacher, he has power over all of them. This is what he's saying. Job continues to respond to his friends. And he also is complaining to the Lord also in uh, chapter 13 as we move along. I'm, looks like I'm making good time here. I hate to go through it this quick because really, every one of these chapters I'm reading, I could spend an hour on it by yeah. itself. You know, but I'm trying to point out the book of Job because if I go verse by verse, uh, the the Lord's probably gonna come <laughs> before I finish. Before I finish, you'll probably come. So, man, chapter 13. Look, I have seen all this with my own eyes and heard it with my own ears, and now I understand. I know as much as you do. You are no better than I am. And Job is telling them, I am not inferior to you. Even though they come up, they're coming to the, to him, down in him. Like I said, they're coming to him like they're here, on top, and he's down here. That's the way they came to him. But he's telling them right here, I am not inferior to you. As for me, I would speak directly to the Almighty. I want to argue my case with God Himself. He says, I'm wasting my time with you. I want to speak directly to God. This is what he's saying. He says, I don't have to explain to you what's going on with me. I want to take it directly to the Lord. Verse 4. As for you, you smear me with lies. As physicians, you are worthless quacks. I kind of like the way the Living Bible says it here. So what he's saying, you are doctors with, uh, without wisdom. And what you, with the things you say are lies and they're worthless. If you're not using the Word of God the way God intended it, then they are. They're worthless. And you saw that through the verses we just read. They used a lot of uh, things that is from the Lord, but they used it in the wrong way. So when you use the Word of God in the wrong way, it is. It is worthless. Only when you use the Scriptures the way the Lord intended it, does it mean anything that it has power. Verse 5, if only you could be silent. That's the wisest thing you could do. Job is telling him, if you could only just shut up, you'd be wise. Psalms, I mean Proverbs 17, 28. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. So the Lord even says, when you're quiet, that's wise. In fact, the Lord says, listen, speak little, but listen a lot. That's what the Lord says. But these guys did no listening, and all they did was blabber. Verse 6, listen to my charge. Pay attention to my arguments. Are you defeating God with lies? Do you make your dishonest arguments for His sake? Will you slain slain your testimony in His favor? Will you argue God's case for Him? 
What he's saying, you think God needs your lies? You think God needs you to twist His words so you can help me or have me believe the way you, the way you're, what you're saying? This is what he's saying. And in verse 9, what will happen when he finds out what you're doing? Can you fool him as easily as you fool people? So he's saying, you think you can fool God like you fool men? How many of us know there's men out there? They can fool men, but they can't fool the Lord. Can't fool the Lord. Verse 10, no, you will be in trouble with him if you secretly slay your testimony in his favor. Doesn't his majesty terrify you? Doesn't your fear of him overwhelm you? Your platitudes are as valuable as ashes. Your defense is as fragile as clay as a clay pot. This so called this so called truth that you're telling me, he's telling Job, it ain't worth ashes. What you've been telling me ain't worth ashes. Go ahead. Right here in verse twelve, you know, he says, This so called this so called truth you're telling me, they're nothing but lies. Your defense is so easily broke. Broke can be so easily broken like a pot of clay. Like if you drop a pot of clay, what is it going to do? It's going to break. It's not made of plastic. In verse 13. Be silent now and leave me alone. Let me speak and I will face the consequences. Yes, I will take my life in my hands and say what I really think. God might kill me, but I will trust him. I'm going to argue my case with him. Now, if Job could have said the first part of 15, where, where he said, God might kill me, but I will trust him. Yeah. If he could have just stopped right there, that <laughs> would be good. All right, yeah. But he didn't stop right there. What he says on after that, he went from right to being in the flesh again. But what, I like what he says, though. Yeah. Even though if God kills me, Amen. I will trust him. Amen. Amen. Verse 16, but this is what will save me. I am not godless. If I were, I could not stand before him. Listen closely to what I am about to say. Hear me out. I have prepared my case. I will be proven innocent. Who can argue with me over this? And if you prove me wrong, I will remain silent and die. What he's saying here in these verses, he's, Job is ready to speak his mind. What's on his heart. And right now, he's in the flesh. Remember that. But also remember, Job is not cursing God. He's complaining. Now, there's a difference. He's complaining, but he's not cursing God. Remember that. Verse 20. O oh God, grant me these two things, and then I will be able to face you. Remove your heavy hand from me, and don't terrify me with your awesome presence. Now summon me, and I will answer. Or let me speak to you, and you reply. Tell me, what are my sins? Show me my rebellion and my sins. Why do you turn away from me? Why do you treat me as your enemy? Would you, terif would, would you terrify a leaf blown by the wind? Would you chase a dry, a, a dry straw? But so what he's saying right here, he's, he's nobody, you know. I mean, you, he wouldn't go after a wind that's been, I mean, a leaf blown by the wind. Job's saying, you know, who am I? In verse 26, you write bitter accusations against me and bring up all the sins of my youth. You put my feet in stocks. You examine all my paths. You track all my footprints. I waste away like rotten wood. Like a moth-eaten coat. Job is, uh, like I said, he's a little upset. Uh, like I said, verse by verse, I can go into detail, but I'm just pointing out the whole chapter. Job is upset. Okay, and we're going to find that through the uh, uh, most of, a lot of, the middle of Job, verses, chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, it says a lot that we can, we can teach on. But from there up to about chapter 38, it's uh, it's almost saying the same thing. It's just rep it's just repeating itself. So uh, that's why I'm going through it kind of quick because mainly it's shown Job is complaining. He's complaining now. Some of what he says is true, but some isn't. Right, and we're going to see that. Chapter 14. Man that is born of woman has a short life and full of trouble. Man that is born of woman. He's talking about the first birth. 
Okay, man of born of woman, not born of God. Born of woman. We blossom like a flower and then wither. Like a passing shadow, we quickly disappear. Must you keep an eye on such a frail creature and demand an act counting from me? <clears throat> Excuse me. Who can bring purity out of an impure person? No one. That's what he says, no one. Speaking about the first birth, no man, no man can do this. Do you go to a psychiatrist, someone who's supposed to be able to help you, you know, with your past that you can't let go of? He can't make you pure. He's not going to clean up your life. This man is not going to clean up your life. When the Lord takes it, He cleans it up. He, when you become a born again, now listen to me, when you become a born again Christian, the Lord doesn't say, well, let's talk about what happened back there. He don't say that. Men do. He's, well, let's sit down, let's, let's talk about what happened back then. The Lord does not do that. The Lord says, from here, point, from here on, you're a new creature. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. You're a new creature. Hey, what he's saying is, that is behind you now. Now, how are you going to walk a straight line with me if you keep looking back? Amen? Amen? How can you walk a straight line with me going this way, but you keep doing this? Can anybody walk straight when they're, when they're looking this way? When you're looking behind you, you can't walk straight. That's why the Lord, when you give your life to Him, He does not look behind you. He's saying, hey, now you're mine. Now you're born again. We're going to start all over, but this time with me. With me guiding you. Amen? Amen. See the difference between God and man? <laughs> Amen. 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 Verse 5. You have decided the length of our lives. You know how many months we will live. And we are not given a minute longer. So leave us alone and let us rest. We are like hard hands. So let us finish our work in peace. Even a tree has more hope. If it is cut down, it will sprout again and grow new branches. Though its roots have grown old in the earth and its stumps and the stump decays, at the scent of water, it will bud and sprout again like a new seedling. Now verse 10, listen to verse 10. But when people die, their strength is gone, their breath, their last, and then were or they. Job is saying, okay, when we die, that's it. He's saying, where do we go? What happens to us? This is what Job says. Now, I'm going to show you what, where we go, just in case somebody in here or anybody listening to the CD doesn't know, I'm getting ready to show you where we go. But Job knows because I'm going to show you in some verses after in a minute that Job knows. But for those who don't know, it says... Uh, you know, where do we go when we die? Okay, when you're reading your Bible, when you read your Bible, the words paradise, the words Abraham bosom, the grave, Sheol, Hades, prison, bondless pit, death, all these, when you read those in the Bible, all those mean temporary hell. That's a temporary hell. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to do my best to explain it to you. In Acts 2.31, it says, He's seeing this, meaning King David, David foreseeing this, seeing that this before spake of the resurrection of, resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. So King David was shown that the Messiah, who was coming from his bloodline, he was shown that the Messiah would not see corruption. And he would not be left in in hell. So where is Jesus going? When, he hang, when they hung him and he died on the cross, he did go to hell. But I'm going to explain that right there, okay? Don't get scared. I'm going to explain it. But I'm just showing you, he went to hell. So the, remember, the question is, where do we go? That was the question. So I'm going to show you biblically where we're going. I'm going to show you where the lost people are going. I'm going to show you where the saved people are going. I'm going to show you where the angels, the fallen angels are going. And then I'm going to show you their final destination. 
But in Revelation chapter 20, verses 15 and 14 and 15, and death and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. So hell, wherever it's at, hell was cast into the lake of fire. So hell was not the final place. Y'all with me? Right here it says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whoever so was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Is your name, is your name in the book of life? Do you know your name begins in the book of life? And when you do that final rejection of the Lord, of, of Jesus, your name is plotted out of the book. It's not added to the book. It's already in there. But when Jesus knows you, you reject Him for the last time, the Bible... Now, I've, I've had a teaching on this, and I'm not going to go into big detail, but it does say your name's in there. But when He sees that you've rejected Him for the final time, your name is, the Bible says, is blotted out that of the book. That's all in Revelation? Mm -hmm. I, I showed that when I did the last days. Yeah. When I taught on that, that's what I showed. But... Our name is in the book of life. It's in there. It's not that it's added in there. It's in there. And it's not taking it out. It's, the Lord doesn't take it out of there until you reject Him for the final time. Then your name is taken out. But what I'm showing here is they're cast into the lake of fire. Hell is into the lake of fire. And those whose name is not in the book. I couldn't imagine my name not being in the book. I told you about the angels, the fallen angels. Second Peter. Chapter 2, verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell, and delivered into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So where are the fallen angels going? Got a place for them too. Now we're going to talk about paradise and prison. Now, which, which I already showed y'all this before, but this is for those of y'all who... Paradise, prison. People who died from here, from here to here, went to paradise. Because Jesus had to be the first to go into heaven. They went to paradise. Now, I'm going to read the scriptures, but I'm just getting you a picture so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. This is paradise. This is like a, a, a stream, a river, going between paradise and prison. Now, the whole place is called Sheol, like I just said. The whole place is called Sheol. And there's a great gulf fix between them, a river. But there's a paradise and there's a prison. Now, once Jesus resurrected into heaven, His resurrection, everyone that was in paradise went, behind, went up with Jesus. Okay, So these verses, when I'm reading them to you, you can kind of get a picture of it. Luke chapter 16, verse 22 through 3 and 24. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Now the beggar is Lazarus. How many of us know Lazarus? God raised Lazarus from the dead. Now He didn't give him a resurrection body. When Jesus, when He rose from the dead, He got His new body. Lazarus still came back with the same physical body. Just throwing that out there. But, and it came to pass that the beggar, Lazarus, died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. What did I say Abraham's bosom was? Like I said, it's all hell, but not hell fire, not lake of fire. It's just Sheol. So He, he went to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and he left, and, and in hell he left, lift up his eyes, being tormented, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So the rich man who died, that was lost, he could see Abraham and Lazarus, the beggar. Across that river, he could see them. It says it right here. Verse 24, And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. So he could see him and he also could speak to him. That's how close they were. So one side of the river is paradise. Abraham, Lazarus, all the Christ Moses, Noah, all of them. But on the other side of this river was the lost people. And in verse in Luke Chapter 16, verse 26. And besides all this, between us, it's talking about Abraham and, and the rich man, between us and you, there is a great gulf fix. Talking about that river. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, 
neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So what he's saying here, they couldn't come on this side, and the ones that were on this side couldn't go on that side. So the so the Christians couldn't go on the prison side, and the people in prison couldn't go on the paradise side. That's all that's saying there. Luke twenty three forty three. We're going to talk about paradise. And Jesus said unto him, the man on the cross, Verily I say unto thee, Today, because Jesus, as soon as he gave up the ghost, he went down to Sheol, to hell. Today shall that be with me in paradise. Okay, where's paradise? That's where all the Christians are. Today, because this man opened his eyes right before he, was, he died, he did recognize Jesus Christ. Now that man, I don't know if y'all look at it, but I know if I was him, and I'm looking at a man next to me on the cross, just like me. And I can't even, I can't even tell he's a man. Because the Bible says Jesus was beat up so bad. They beat him up so bad, he didn't even look like a man. So if I'm on that cross, and I'm looking at this man on the cross, just like me. And I can't even recognize he's a man. Am I going to look at him and say, hey, you must be, you must be the Messiah. This man who died next to Jesus, the Spirit revealed who that man was. The Spirit revealed to that guy on the cross who that was. Did he look like a king? Didn't look like a king. He didn't look like a lord. He looked like a beat up man hanging on the cross. And the Holy Spirit revealed it to that man that that was the Messiah. And I'm sure he did it to the other man, but he didn't receive. And that's the world today. That's the world today. The, lord will, the Holy Spirit will show you who Jesus is. And then it's up to us if we want to recognize him. And the broad is the way to hell because a lot of people are going to be like the other man on the cross. Narrow is the way to heaven because there's only a few people that will, that will be like this man who looked at Jesus and said, this is the Messiah. Amen? Amen. But anyway, this man went to paradise with Jesus. Okay, so I'm showing you there's a paradise. Then in 1 Peter 3.19, by which also he went, speaking about Jesus, when he gave up the ghost. If you read... First Peter, you can uh, it'll tell you about that. By which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison. So he preached to the spirits in prison, not for salvation. He was just showing, look, this was me, and you didn't accept me, and this is why you're here. He brought the man that recognized him as Christ, yeah. went to paradise, but then he went to the ones to prison and preached to them, not for salvation. Because their time has passed. But he was just showing them, look, this is who you ignored me. I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. I am the Son of God. Okay, that's what he preached to them. But I'm just showing you, paradise in prison. Where do you go? Now, the question was, Job said, where do we go? Well, the, the answer is, well, if you're born again, you're going with the Lord. If you're lost, you're going to prison. Then, the final destination, like I said, this is not. This is only temporary prison. This is only temporary. This is final. You're going from hell to lake of fire. Now that's where you'll be punished forever and ever and burned for eternity. This is the word of God. Okay, people don't take that serious. John 14, 1, 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Do you believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I love this. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. You want to know when you die? You want to know where you go when you die? If you're a born again Christian, Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. And if I go, not only is He preparing a place, but He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. <laughs> Amen? I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Amen? Amen. Man, these are great words. <laughs> Amen. Now back to verse 11. As water evaporates from a lake and a river disappears in drought, people, who are, people are laid to rest and do not rise again until the heavens are no more they will not wake up nor be roused from their sleep. I wish you would hide me in the grave and forget me there until your anger has passed, but mark your calendar to think of me again. Can the 
Can the dead live again? Well, we've already shown that. If so, this world gives me hope. Though all my years of struggle, and I, through all my years of struggle, and I would eagerly await the release of death. You will call, and I will answer. And you would yearn for me, your handiwork. For then you would guard my steps instead of watching for my sins. My sins would be sealed in a pouch, and you would cover my guilt. But instead, as mountains fall and crumbles, and as rocks fall from a cliff, now, like I said, he's saying the good things, but then the very next verse, he blows it. But instead, as mountains fall and crumble, as the rocks fall from a cliff, as waters wear away the stones and floods wash away the soil, so you destroy people's hope. You always overpower them, and they pass from the scene. You disfigure them in death and send them away. They never know if their children grow up in honor or stink. Verse 22, they suffer plainly. Their life is full of trouble. Okay, so we see Job going from one extreme, praising God. Then the very next verse, he just blows it all by saying these things. But Job is speaking. He has a mix message here. Some of it is true, some of it is not. But his anger is getting in his way. He's, his flesh is getting in his, way, in his way. But I'm going to show you in verse 10 when he says, When a man dies, where does he go? Job backs that. But in verse 14, he says, I will wait till my change comes. Now, the King James says, I will wait till my change comes. So Job knows there's going to there's gonna be a, that the Lord's coming. Okay? He knows. But he just made that statement just a little bit further up. So Job says things that he, he he knows that are not true. He makes statements that are things that are true. But then right behind it, he says things that are. So this is our man Job. He's got his ups and, and his downs. He praises the Lord and then he turns against him. Doesn't turn against him, but complains to him. Like I said, the main thing we're showing here, Job is complaining. He is complaining. But he's not cursing. Please remember, there's a big difference between that. There's a big difference on complaining to the Lord and cursing the Lord. Big difference.